my mother. She's standing at the counter with her hair shining loose over her shoulder, her eyes just as bright, her smile so wide she can only be oblivious to the lipstick marks on her teeth. She's laying her change out onto the counter, one coin at a time, placing each down with a sharp metallic tap on the smooth space between the till and the gum rack. The tapping sound, clear and deliberate behind the dancing wall of her voice, feels like the echo of a giant clock in the background, ticking down to something. Tap, tap, like tick-tock. Eighty-nine, she says, tap, tick. Ninety, tap, tock. Beside the rows of coins stacked up to tens in neat piles are two crisp bills. Beside the bills are her intended purchases. There are only three, a vanilla-scented lip balm, a box of salted crackers, and a carton of full cream milk. One hundred, she beams. Tap, tick. Nearly there. She's twenty cents off the total. She's fumbling in the depths of her bag in search of more loose change. The guy behind the counter, he's standing there with his arms folded, trying to look serious while he stares down her shirt. She's made this easy for him, the staring, leaning forward the way she is, her shoulders curved in the way they are. The man waiting behind my mom, he huffs a sigh. It comes out mostly through his nose. His hands tighten on his shopping basket. He wants to buy a frozen pizza, a bottle of soda water, a tube of lubricant. Clearly, he's not asking much of life as it is, and this is supposed to be the express queue. My mother looks over her shoulder at him. Maybe she caught the gust on the back of her neck, felt his breath hit the space between her shoulders. Sorry, she says to him. I'm in a hurry, too. She gives him the kind of smile that leaves him awkward for a few moments. His cheeks color to a tough, meaty red. He huffs again. But this time it isn't a sigh. Not exactly. I'll pay whatever's left, the woman behind Lube Dude says. She's middle-aged, no makeup, sloppy ponytail, and sports shoes that have never seen the surface of any track or indoor court. She wants to buy a pack of tampons, a bottle of aspirin, a box of cheese-flavored crackers, and the obligatory bread, eggs, and milk, of course. Still, it isn't hard to tell why she's testy. Five, my mother says, ignoring her. Six, tick, and then talk. The shop is small, but understaffed. Four checkouts, two in use. The guy behind the counter should have done something by now, but he's young, new. Who expects this kind of scene on a calm midweek afternoon? He clears his throat. Ma'am. My mother stops counting. Yes? Don't worry about the rest, he says. Please. So, at 14 cents short, everyone in line behind my mother exhales a loud sigh of relief. But are you sure? She opens her eyes wide at him and smiles again the tips of her teeth caught with the scarlet smudge of her lipstick, red smeared on white, gleaming. Yes, really, the cashier guy says. It doesn't matter, just please. His new worry is she's going to launch into a thank you speech, that she'll stay right where she is with her shining hair and her stained smile and hold the queue up even longer while she tells him how wonderful he is, how kind he is, how he can only be an angel helping a stranger out so selflessly. From the way she's standing, cozy on her elbows, her feet arched in their heels with one ankle crossed back in a lazy twist, this seems a likely scenario. The way she leans, it's like she's at her own kitchen counter. The way she's smiling, it's like she's catching up with an old friend. Please, he says. My mother seems unsure. She turns her head for a moment, about to look back again at the growing line of people, now six, maybe seven, behind her, but thinks better of it and returns her attention to the cashier. He drags his eyes away from the place on her chest where her shirt ends and her skin starts. For a moment, he looks like he might be about to cry. Well, times are tough for all of us, my mother says. Cashier man stares at her. He blinks. <laughs> 